um, on the National Minimum Wage Gov website um, is actually £4.30 an hour now. Yes. So um, you can obviously pay £4.30 an hour. That's a, that is the national minimum for an apprentice. Um, but then you, as a business, I would always say to them, if you can pay more, do. Because if you're wanting a certain caliber of candidate, then you can offer a higher wage. I mean, because then if you look at the actual national living wage um, that isn't an apprentice, it's £8.91. Yes. So that is quite a large difference from £4.30 to £8.91. And then you've got your, it, it has your 18 to 20 year olds is um, £6.56. So if we say you offered an average five ninety five or £5.50, Mm. then you're 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 more attractive as an employer because you're not offering four pound 30 but then you're not offering them a stupid silly high salary that matches the people that you've already got in your workforce yeah i mean again this is one of the biggest problems that we have attracting people into apprenticeships apprenticeships mm -hmm. because a lot of people they, they're career changers you know they've, they've gone they've, they didn't know what to do at school they've gone off in a particular direction and then realized when they're about 20 something that you know what I really want to do an apprenticeship and for us yeah. they are the best people to have in the classroom because they're focused yeah. they want it they want to know. do that yeah. exactly and they're happy to be there rather than the 16 17 year olds that sometimes are just there to keep everyone quiet you know um, yeah, this because mum told me to <laughs> yeah exactly and because i've got to be in education till i'm 18. yeah so we i mean being able to support them has got to be a must um but their main gripe is i can't live on £4.30 an hour so I always say to them that you know it's only for the first year mm. with the apprenticeship that you, you we offer is that everything's paid for so all your training is paid for your NVQ is paid for um, your endpoint assessment is paid for so you need to factor that into that low wages for the yes. first year in the second year then depending on your age you go up to national minimum wage so like you said for a 23 and over it's £8.91 an hour so instantly, mm -hmm. it's almost double in the second. Yeah. Okay, so this is a slide that I'm currently working on. So I just want to make sure that everybody appreciates that there's so there's a wealth of information out there that to digest it all, you would you would spend days of your life doing it. So this is just something that I've quickly put together. Okay, it's taken me like quite a few hours to, to, to get to this point, searching various things. So it's not it's not the be all end all, it's not a definitive list. It's just a rough guide. That's all it is. So I, what I've tried to do here is I've tried to compare the apprenticeship with a diploma and to give people cost comparison so that they can try and make an informed decision. So effectively, what I've looked at here is ages 16 to 19. I think personally, it's a no brainer. Um, apprenticeship, whether it's the City and Guilds 5357 or the EAO equivalent, all your funding is paid for. You do one day a week classroom knowledge based units all paid for four days a week learning your trade on site and you'll get paid £4.30 an hour for the first year and then after that first year you'll then move up to depending on your age £4.62 okay and again most employers will look after their apprentices and as your ability increases you know after the first year you can try and negotiate a better wage Okay, so don't be afraid. You're not limited to these. These are just the minimum government amounts. Okay. Your employer then also pays for PPE and any additional training that's required. Your AM2S, your endpoint assessment, is paid for, which is usually around £780. Your workplace logbook is also paid for, and that's around um, £1,200 to £1,700. If you look on the diploma route, you can see those costs there. So and you're employed straight away. So it's definitely worth considering an apprenticeship 16 to 19. So if you look at the diploma route, which is you know, full-time college, which is two and a half days a week, uh, it is government funded again. Level one, you only get the classroom-based learning. Uh, so at level two, year one, you only get the classroom-based learning. So you're not getting any on-site experience. Now, my experience of apprenticeship versus diploma. So I was an apprentice mechanic for three years. And my flatmate at the time was a, a mechanic doing the diploma route. So he was at college two and a half days. Now I left him for dust and he was, you know, he didn't learn as much on, on, at, in the classroom as what I was learning on site. And after a year, 
I was changing engines in cars outside our flat. And I offered him once to come and give me a hand. And he didn't know what he was looking at. He, you know, he, he was, I, I, in the end, I told him to go away because he was slowing me down. And I just wanted to get the engine out and get it back in again. I mean, he was asking real basic questions that had he been working in the job four days a week, he would have known. So that is my experience um, of apprenticeship versus diploma. So you're not getting on-site experience when you do the diploma. When you leave college, you then need to find employment. Now, because you've done three, uh, two years at college, you're going to be expecting a wage to go with that. And also because of your age, you may struggle to find an employer that's willing to take someone on because you'll still be green. You still won't have the knowledge. What they teach you in college is you, they've only got you for a very limited time. Um, and you don't get the same level. Okay, so be prepared to struggle to find employment afterwards or be, be prepared to take a pay cut to get that experience. You also then still need to complete your workplace logbook, which may not be um, funded by that point. Okay, um, sometimes referred to as the MVQ, and that can cost between 1200 to 1700 pounds. You also then have your AM2S, which is your endpoint assessment, which costs around 780 pounds. So you need to factor that cost in. Whereas with the apprenticeship, it's all paid for and it's all still government funded all the way through and you've got employment from the start. I then sort of put together something for age 19 plus. Now this gets complicated, which, why, which is why I've put that red asterisk there. Okay, so again, apprenticeship version, it is partially government funded at the moment. Um, your employer pays for 5% of the electrical apprenticeship, which is roughly 900 pounds spread over the entire apprenticeship. So they don't pay it all in one go. And if they have to let you go or um, they sack you for whatever reason, they only pay for that part of the apprenticeship. They don't pay for the whole thing. Okay, So it's in their interest, really. 900 pounds spread over three to four years is not a lot of money. Add on to that as well that employers get at the moment 3,000 to 4,000 pounds incentive to take you on. That fee is covered for. So it's definitely worth it from that point of view. Again, you did a one day a week in the classroom, knowledge based units paid for. And then you also did four wait days a week learning the trade on site. Again, employer pays for PPE training, AM2 is paid for, logbooks paid for. But as an apprentice, you will be on £4.30 an hour as a first year apprentice. Now, as soon as you go over the age of 23, obviously that goes up to £8.91 in the second year. So I'll give you an up breakdown of cost in a minute. Again, compare that to the diploma, City and Guilds 2365, which the, the, the government funding for the 2365 level three has disappeared. And that's now the 8202 um, or the EAO equivalent. It can be funded up to the age of 19 plus. OK, um, it can also be funded after that, which I'll get in, onto in a second, but only for certain circumstances. Again, if you were to pay for that yourself, you're looking somewhere between £1,500 to £3,000 for level two, and that can be between six to 36 weeks. Um, level three, again, six to 36 weeks, and that increases from to £3,500 £3, roughly. And again, these are rough numbers. Again, typically no on-site experience. When you leave college, you will need to find employment. And again, just because you're at an age where you think that you're entitled to £8.91 an hour, an employer is going to look at you and think, OK, you've done two years at college or six, maybe six weeks at college, depending on whether you did the bulk um, full time course over 16 weeks. And they're going to look at you and they're going to say, do you know what? You are an expensive person to employ. You've got no real life experience. You've got no um, on-site training. You may not know how houses go together. And you're asking me for £8.91 an hour if you're over the age of 23. That's too expensive. Why am I going to bother with that when I can get an apprentice um, for £4.30 an hour? So you, you may struggle to find employment. Most people at this point are stuck between a rock and a hard place. Uh, they either become electrical improvers on site or they get jobs with friends and family or work for free to try and make up that, that, that on site experience. Some even go for agency work um, and, and get the experience that way. But from what I've heard online and talking to people in the real world, I've even done some videos around it, it is a real hard journey. Okay, so just be prepared for that when you go in for it. It can be a real hard journey. And obviously, there's ends of the spectrum. You know, some people may zip through it and think, you know what, I don't know what all the fuss is about. And other people 
may just give up uh, and then you've got everything in between. Things to also think about that is that once you've got employment, you still need to complete the workplace logbook, sometimes it's also referred to as the MVQ. The logbook still costs between £1,200-£1,700, AM2S again £780, and you can do online courses for £8,500 all in, where you can do that in your evenings and weekends. Now, Again, from what I hear, there is a, suspe a suspected high failure rate to this because you are in your you are directing your own learning. And some people just if, you, if there's no support and there's no help, they can't start. They don't know where to start. They don't know how to finish. They don't know what to do. They need somebody to lead them through. So if you need constant support to point you in the right direction, those online courses are not for you. And you will be signing up to a basically a financial burden because it's a monthly payment. And that eight and a half thousand pound isn't guaranteed. I think that only covers you for three years. So if you go into, if you go over three years, you're then on a, a monthly financial drip, basically costing, just paying into something like a loan. Or what I suggest is you search online. Obviously, again, there's vast experiences there. I've, talking, I've spoken to some people that don't see a problem. They get through it, they're motivated, they know what they need's doing, and they, they keep on top of it. Um, and they get through it. Um, but if you look online, there's actually a lot of people that um, feel that they've been cheated and conned out of money uh, and spent a lot of money and not got anything in return. So all I'm saying is just be aware, search online, do your own research. OK, also as well, the adult education budget can fund anyone up to the age of 19 to 23 to get a level two or three qualification if you don't already have one. If you are age 24 plus, you may need to contribute to some costs. Now, again, I've done a quick search. I've looked through it. There's so much information out there. I suggest you do some research, but have a look what I've put through here. I've copied this off of the government website. So it is, it is legitimate information. But again, you'll have to have, have to have a look around and see, see what's what because it is a real minefield. OK, I've then done a total cost till qualification comparison. So with the apprenticeship, obviously, you get your £4.30 a week. That's £172, sorry, £4.30 an hour. That's £172 a week, roughly, uh, which equate, equates to roughly £8,940. But what you need to consider is that there's no cost of training, no cost of PPE. You probably won't have to buy any tools other than your hand tools. Other tools will be provided. Any work equipment may be provided. Um, workplace logbook is paid for, AM2S is paid for. So there's a potential saving there of between 6,000 and around 9,000 pounds. So if you add those two together, so you add the 8,944 and then the potential savings, you get between 14,944 pounds a year or 17,924 pounds a year. So that is actually quite a comparable wage because then if you look down at the, the, the second year's wage if it goes up to £8.91 an hour if you're over the age of 23 on £8.91 an hour you're earning roughly £356.40 a week which equates to £18,532.80 so that's only a cost difference of just over a thousand pounds and you're employed straight from the start. Compare that to the diploma route. Again, you can work that in around your existing job in the evenings or weekends or in a 16 week bulk booking. So the total cost for the 2365, uh, and I've put slash 8202 there because um, depending on whether you can get funding or not, um, you can stay on 2365 if you're paying for it. Um, if you're getting the funding, obviously that's the 8202 for the level three. But I've put there a cost of £4,500 to £6,500. Now, the, the, four, the lower end is very few and far between, so just be aware. Workplace logbook still costs £1,200 to £1,700, AM2, £780. And the online courses is about £8,500 for all of that combined. But again, beware, it is only for three years. You go over that, then you're basically paying into a cash cow you're on a, a treadmill that you can't get off but you are on your own with those courses as well so just be careful like I said wages are debatable when you leave that so you may have no choice to go self-employed because again like I said at £8.91 an hour you're an expensive commodity uh, a company if you don't know anything 
Um, so just think about that from the employer's point of view. You've got someone that's applying for a job. They've got no on-site experience. They've got few qualifications they've gained in college. Are you going to pay them £8.91 an hour for not knowing anything? So you have to, you have to question that. Um, again, just take into consideration, you may struggle to get employment, which will affect time frame and workplace logbook. I mean, I've heard of people that have been doing this five years. They're still not qualified, so just be aware of that. And you cannot enter the AM2S without your workplace logbook being completed. Without all of the above, you will not be classed as an electrician in, in the eyes of the industry. You may struggle to get enrolled with the Competent Person Scheme because the entry requirements have changed for that. They've now made it that you ideally have to have a um, portfolio, NVQ, and all the qualifications that go with it, and an AM2 endpoint assessment. And then, so I've basically just put in conclusion there, you either swallow the cost of training, which is roughly six to six thousand to eight thousand nine hundred and eighty pounds in your first year, you're employed straight away, gaining experience and potentially qualifying three to four years, or you spread that cost over the next four to five years. You work longer hours to fit the training in, so obviously that does affect your family life, and you then have to consider that you're taking your chances at finding employment when you have finished the class-based learning. Now, obviously, I've explained that. You know, different circumstances, different financial positions, everyone's story is different, but you need to do your research, you really need to think about this. Um, and I have made some videos with the help of some people that have been through these routes. Um, so if you just search YouTube for Adrian Davey routes into the industry, it will come up with those videos. So you need, you need to have that in. transparency. Um, yes. And saying, look, yes, it, yes, it is like this, but this is what you'll go up to. Um, because then, you know, if you if I was to change my career and, you know, in, in your mid 20s, you have financial obligations mm. um, and you think, right, OK, no, I, I can live off that for a year. I can do that. And knowing full well that that will be near on double after after the year. Yes. Um, but then also with those, this is where the incentives come in, because yeah. say if they were to get that three grand for that apprentice. You can say to them, yeah, it's going to, yes, it's tough and it's £4.30 for the first year, but we'll pay your travel. Use that so incentive. A way for employers to look at that £3,000 incentive really could be to help bridge the gap between the apprenticeship wage and getting the right candidate. Yeah. Who's going to actually work for the company and earn their money mm -hmm. um, and then see it that way. Because again, that three grand would, would pay for quite a lot, I would, yeah. I would think, you know maybe three months worth of topping up on the wages at least just to, to sort yeah. of help them through. Absolutely, yeah. Until they get to a point where they're actually earning money, you know, yeah. and, and being useful. Um, is there any kind of, obviously when people go off to uni, they can get uh, loans, student mm. loans. Is there student loans available for people in apprenticeships? Um, that is again, something I don't know, let me have a look. Because again, if they, could help, if they could get something to help bridge that gap just for the first year, we would attract so many more people. Mm. And I always, say to, I always say to the apprentices as well, just because it says £4.30, don't be afraid to negotiate. You know, if you've yeah. got other skills, transferable skills, and yeah. you are useful, you could say, look, why don't you try me out for three months at mm. this much? And then if you like it and it works, can we then increase it to this much? And then, yeah. you know, we'd do a three month sort of stage thing. And we'd do three months, check it, three months, check it, mm. till we get through that first year. I think um, I think that's probably the road they're going to have to go down because even just doing a quick search now, mm. um, it, it is all on the employer side and all the incentives and things like that coming out because I think can offer a bit more if they want a higher caliber of candidate. But I think being that transparent, like you said, said look after after a year you'll go up to this and then and do that uh, or as I say use the incentive to help pay for travel. Um, I think uh, one company helped to pay for their lunch costs because mm. they were working they had to pay for their lunch every day so um it is things like that but yeah that's something i might i might actually have a deeper look into because straight away just doing a quick search it just all comes up with the employer side like employer um funding getting your incentives and things like that to the employer it doesn't actually say for the individual well again this is the thing isn't it it's all very well in, in supporting the employers but we also need to support the candidates as well yeah. um and you know i was talking to a guy the other day and he was saying you know like when you're 16 17 It'd be nice if you didn't use that um, mm. funding at that age, you could bank it and then maybe yeah. use it later on in life. That would be another option. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. again, you know, when you're 16, 17, you don't know what you want to do and you no. fumble your way through. And it's only when you sort of get past all that into your 20s, I think you realise what it's all about and actually who you are 
where mm. you want to be in the universe, you know. And, what and, skills you have. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and what you're good at. And that's why we need to be able to support both the employer and mm. the apprentice. If I knew about this, if I knew about these resources when I was 16, I don't know. I don't know if I would either be here with more qualifications and be doing the same thing or doing something completely different because uh, when I was in school you know they asked me at year nine to pick choices for your career and I was you know you're 14 years old and they say right you know you've got to pick pick your courses to decide which job you want to do for the rest of your life that's like oh yeah. okay and I think even having that flexibility to go yeah okay I chose that but I want to change halfway through yeah you know so I think well, and again my also- I was in the same position and my parents are the most relaxed people you could ever meet but they've got no aspiration in life really and I went home and asked them, and they, they didn't have a clue either. So there was no support at home for any of that. So well, they, no, my, my, <laughs> my parents had, I think, uh, well, I was going to I was gonna go to law, uh, go and do law at university. And I came home and said to my dad, oh, I don't want to be a lawyer anymore because the college had frightened me. Right as I'd gone through all this process, I'd got a, a B in law and, and got accepted to my universities. And they said, right, just to put it into perspective for you, this is how much debt you're going to have. <laughs> when, when you qualify um there's only a, like a tiny percentage of you that will get a placement you don't you can't pick and choose which and all this stuff and I just sat there and I just could feel it, all, all the passion that I had just go and I came home to my dad and said I don't want to be a lawyer anymore he said oh thank god for that I thought you were too chatty to be a lawyer anyway I was like well oh, thank really good thing. <laughs> but you know and then next thing I know a week later turn 18 he gets me a job behind a bar and then that's it so it's gone from one extreme to the other there yeah (laughs) completely different and that they they had no idea about this they had no idea about with my parents the only thing that my gov was used for was tax yeah and that was it so um yeah it's definitely getting that education out there coming back to what you just said though about i mean again schools are help don't i feel don't help the situation because when you're at school you're told if you're academic you're going to go to uni and if you're not academic you're going to get a trade and actually that doesn't work because we still need yeah. academic people to be trades people yeah. there's still a certain amount of, you, you know you still got to get a certain level uh, of maths and english yeah. to be able to do the course so fundamentally that's wrong and that needs to change already but then also as well off the back of what you just said was that if you go to uni you end up with all that debt but if you do an apprenticeship it's all paid you know, you come out of that, you're earning while you're learning, and then you've got no debt at the end of that, mm. and you're earning £500 a week or whatever it may be straight away. And you're streamlining that process. You're not spending four years in a classroom racking up that debt, working two jobs, you know, trying to do all that. And don't get me wrong, um, university is great for some people. My other half went to university and I didn't. So we are literally the perfect example of, you know, and we both went, we, we met at work. So it's like we, we were both in the same position. We were both in the same place, but he went to uni and I didn't, mm. you know. So um, there are certain um, there are certain careers out there that, yes, you have to have a degree, but it doesn't mean that you have to go to university anymore. You mm. know, um, I found out literally a month ago that they now do apprenticeships for solicitors. There is an apprenticeship out there for you to become a solicitor. And I was just absolutely mind blown that that's even out there now. And this is frustrating, isn't it? Had you known at the time, that might have been a completely different yeah, of fish. <laughs> uh, but this is one of the reasons why I wanted to do these videos, because I think it's really clear, you know, there's, a, there's definitely a market for getting the right information out there. So yeah. to help people make informed decisions. So, you know, I really value your time. I really appreciate yeah, it's, it. I, I, it's one of those things where I really get my soapbox out on it because I, do, <laughs> I, lo- I love talking about friendships and I love talking about training and things like that. And I think it's because I spent that time between school and college and even through college going I don't know if what I'm doing is what I want to do and that's frightening me because at that age that is your life that is you know you're trying to make that decision for the rest of your life with no experience with no experience (laughs) and and, and next to no help because the resources were not there even Mm. you know um when I was in college um I didn't know about careers departments or um you know anything like that advice and guidance um people I, I didn't know anything about that so um yeah that's why I get I, I do get quite passionate about it because I like to let people know and say no that there is this out there 
um, and it can definitely, it's, it's, it's so much better help. I mean, don't get me wrong, you want to change your career halfway through at a more mature age and you have the fine, you know, you're financially stable to do so and take that hit with a salary. Absolutely, because, you know, you could only be doing it for a year and then, you, you know, you do get a higher salary. Mm. But if you've got that chance to do it, 16 years old or even 17, 18 years old, whilst you're still hopefully living at home with mum and dad, mm. then you could then leave home with your dream job. Mm. Absolutely. And be self-sufficient. Probably yeah. probably get on the property ladder before all your friends as well, you know, before yeah. prices start to rise and all that kind of stuff. So I remember um, one of my friends, he bought a house when he was 18, you know, oh. and <laughs> I was still living at home with my parents, you know. So I've put um, our homepage on there, find an apprenticeship. So obviously if you're an individual trying to find an apprenticeship, the traineeship information, um, the link to the standards that we were going through. Um, yeah the incentives link uh the transfer to transform link all of that and the DAS service and then the wages as well so i've put all that on that document and the, tra the so, training ships one as well yeah training yeah, ships yeah. is on there so yeah hopefully that will be really really helpful but um if if we can even help to one or two or even five businesses through this it'll be a huge uh we tried to do apprenticeship surgeries um so we're trying to get the word out there as much as we could for um learners and employers to just bob in and say uh do you still have to be 16 or can you be any age but because it was just trying to get the word out there and not everybody's on linkedin and you know not everybody's on social media some people just don't sometimes don't have time especially if they are in a trade mm -hmm. um so um it, we didn't get as many people as, as we'd hoped but and there's still people are asking these questions they just don't know where to go to go, get the answers mm -hmm. so hopefully if we can even help a few businesses from it that'd be fantastic yeah, absolutely. And again, if once we get the word out there, maybe other people will come forward and they'll want to help spread the word as well. And then it just yeah, keeps self perpetuating, doesn't it? It should yeah. be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I really do believe in apprenticeships because, you know, four days a week on the job and one day a week at college, I, I, for me, I really feel like that's the best way to learn something. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and even if, um, even if you are that person, I don't want to go to college. Well, then there's providers out there you don't have to. You can do it at work you can, they'll come to your workplace. You don't go to college, you do it in your own time. Um, there's the one thing I will mention about a uh, bit of myth busting as well about um, the big scary 20% off the job. Um, they say, oh, they've got to do 20% off the job and they go, oh my God, what does that mean? I lose them for how many days? A week? It's, it's not like that uh, with off the job. Um, it is anything that is out of their normal daily duties they can use as evidence for off the job. Yeah, so well, I mean, when we talk about this at college, it is, you know, you could be, I think it has to be when you're being paid, isn't it? Yeah. So it could be, you know, you, you read a magazine while you're at work. Um, it could be a video that you've watched. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Think you, I don't think you could do it in your lunch break because obviously you're not being paid for that, are mm -hmm. you? But, you know, your tea break or something, I think you get yeah, paid. Yeah, so it's like anything within, yeah, work hours. So say um, if I was doing um, the uh, leadership management, and um, right now, um, I'm not a manager, but if I was to then run a meeting, that isn't my normal daily, my daily duty. So I could use that evidence to go towards off the job. Got you. And also as well, if your employer pays for you to go on a training course, you yeah. know, an extra training course, um, like we have guys that have the scaffold courses or um, yeah. tower courses, that kind oh, yeah, of thing, perfect. Yeah. for a whole week. And that all counts towards it done. as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so... I mean, we do try to explain all that, but again, it does it does freak a lot of people out. But actually, they're oh, probably yeah. doing a lot of this stuff without even realizing it. All they just need to do is document it and write it down. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time, Lizzie. It's been my pleasure. I've loved it. Thank you. Oh, good. You have a lovely weekend. Yes, you too. Speak to you later. Take care. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye.